Hey everybody, it's Warren and Julie, and we're currently in Sicily, but we're going to talk Serbia today. And of course, we got Arya and Katie. We travel full time with our two dogs, and we're trying to see what it's like to live in different places. And we are looking for answers. That if you're a an expat, a nomad, you want to live abroad, um, we're trying to give you the answers of how you can live somewhere. And we've interviewed our attorney that we're going to talk to today, Nemanja, previously. And, you know, he's got some new information. So at this time, we're going to introduce our favorite attorney in Novi Sad, Serbia. And this is Nemanja. Hello, Nemanja. Uh, hi, guys. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having me back again on the on the video. Um, pleased to, I'm pleased to um, share a lot of new stuff we can well, share to your audience with getting residence permits in Serbia, getting visas and getting people to live here. So shoot away your questions. I'll, I'm here to, you know, walk you through the entire procedures and the entire cost breakdown, time frame, anything you need to know. Sure. So Nemanja, a lot of people, um, especially during the COVID days, had a lot of interest to go into Serbia because it was... Uh, you know, very, very different the way it was treating things. So I think it opened the eyes to a lot of people that were looking for, you know, maybe a place that's not in uh, in the EU or that has some different uh, uh, rules and flexibility. And, you know, so it's become a, a popular location and also because it's not Schengen to, um, to home base from and to go explore other locations. But what, um, what are the opportunities currently for somebody to stay there? I mean, I, I guess we need to find out, um, does home ownership do anything for you? Can you come because you're uh, monetarily self-sufficient? And um, what are the income requirements, digital nomad aspects? And you know, are there tax ramifications for people and things like that if they decide to come and stay in Serbia? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Serbia has been getting a lot of foreigners lately, especially since the time of COVID and, you know, coincidentally, right after you being here and our last interview, and it's been going up ever since, steadily, but going up. And uh, yeah, um, let's go in the order of, of the questions you've said. Um, yeah, homeowners definitely can get, and it's the easiest way to get residence permit in Serbia, simply by maintaining the old homeowner status, you just, renew it every year and um, actually the new thing uh, looking back from from the old let's say regime was every year you go and renew it and just show that you still own a house doesn't matter if it's the same house that you bought the first year or a different one doesn't matter but now at once showing the documents you purchased real estate you get a three years residence permit at once and you don't have to bother every year going to the Please go to the immigration's office. And right after that three years period, you can get permanent residence, which is, I think, That's awesome. A big in change. Any country, right? That's a big change. Welcome change. Three years yes, permanent residence. Yes. And um, well, naturally, right after they hear the, the, the this news, uh, people ask me, yeah, well, what, what about the tax? So if you're coming here to retire, there is no tax. That's it. This this money that you're getting paid, the pension, basically, or your savings, Serbia does not uh, put any tax on it. It's just already being taxed when you got it or there is no tax on pensions. However, you may be pay for stuff that are usually free in Serbia, like public health care. So you're getting your retirement fund or pension being paid every month. Doesn't matter. Let's say from the U.S., but you're not in the social service system. So you may be required to either pay it yourself, uh, which may come to some people the same thing as paying the tax, which is just social contributions or actually pay the services yourself. So that's the only thing you have to pay if you want to. Nobody's you know, going to um, send you like a final note or something, pay up your tax, file a tax report, nothing. However, if you are coming here as a digital nomad, we don't have like a class of uh, tax, um, the our tax administration does not recognize you as such. You are just an entrepreneur that has to pay tax. So basically you're coming here 
either you're paying what we call here a freelancer tax, mm -hmm. which is, believe it or not, a thing now, uh, which is roughly 30% of what you make. And 30? you're covering public health care and everything. And it's actually taxed for each and every month you get. Or you're just starting an entrepreneur business or LLC type of company. You know, it has to be suited to your actual needs. And that way you're paying tax through that, through revenue-based tax. Now, uh, those are two major categories of people that are coming here from the US, Canada, Australia, UK, EU in general. Uh, it's pretty much the same system for all these groups of people. Um, and and uh, how should I say? So uh, getting all these benefits and um, simplifying the procedure, it has been more and more um, desirable location to get here and set up your business, well, micro business, small business, doesn't matter, or your um, center of life activities in Serbia. And uh, we've been providing services in the past. Let's, let's focus on the past two years. Uh, because I think that's the most interesting part where it gets so intense with, with the foreigners coming here uh, to Serbia. So uh, in the past two years, we've been having a lot of changes and except for what we already said, the three-year uh, residence permit, you still, for being like, let's say, a freelancer, you get one year at a time and you have to extend it. But it's a little bit simplified. There are no time windows in which you have to file for some things. Uh, everything is online. You can still choose to go, as we say, on foot and just hand over the documents to the local um, immigration department. But more and more people are just doing everything online. You still need to be here. Don't get me wrong. Uh, people that come to Serbia still need to have exactly the same documents they used to need before. Now it's just simplified by not having to go there, just upload everything and wait for the actual decision. And then you just go to get this residence permit slip in your passport, you're all done. And same goes for the permanent residence permit. You can still do that online. Now, um, people who are homeowners, um, they do not need a work permit. So I'm for them, it's simplified even more. But for all else, they need a work permit here. So, so um, now, as I've mentioned to you briefly before this, uh, we need to address the issue of tomorrow being the February 1st, we're going to have a new online system like updated application system, which unifies the work permit and residence permit, which is, I think, a major thing for people coming here. Because before this, you would have like two or three weeks, four weeks in some cases, of dealing with the residence permit. And right after it's done, you have to deal with the work permit, which was kind of painful because again, bunch of documents, again, lawyers, again, fees and everything else. Now you just collect a bunch of papers or we do it for you. And you just sit home and wait for us to call you and tell you it's all done and that's it. So, so, so I, I, I think what we will do, because there will be questions about this website, um, if we're not going to put the website up here, if you want um, the information to get to this website, we'll go ahead and um, have you go straight to Nemanja so he can give you the guidance and get you going on that and get you in the right direction. So, um, you know, Nemanja will be able to, to help you because I, with it being a new system, he was saying there's some glitches out there and stuff. So it's probably better to just get with Nemanja first and get things um you know, get the answers done in case there's changes. Well, yeah, yeah, that's to me or, you know, any any kind of legal assistance, of course, uh, we'll be happy to provide any any sort of guidance, legal assistance. Hell, we don't even charge for consultations. Just call us up. We, we, we're just happy to provide uh, some guidance to you. And if you cannot manage yourself, of course, we'll help you. Uh, but the actual website it's it it does nothing unless you have the documents. So you actually have to, you know, gather stuff here around Serbia. Now, back when we had the the conversation, um, you could show like your funds in your country of origin or any funds that you have anywhere in the world. Now you have to go to open a bank account in a Serbian bank and then show the police that you have enough funds 
to you know live here in Serbia. What, what, um, what are the amount of funds that you need to have in the bank account? Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, you need to have at least 1500 uh, US dollars or 1500 euro. I know there is a slight difference in the rates, but they tolerate it. So either thing will do, but it needs to be on a Serbian bank. So you don't need a dinar local currency uh, account. You can as well have like euro account, US dollar account, doesn't matter. So, so 1500 show... US dollars is all you have to have in the account then just to be able to show yeah. $1,500. That's for a single yeah. person. What about married? Uh, married, just they they would ask you to put as much as you can. So at the police station and the immigration office, you would get the uh, information the information that they are obligated to tell you, like you need four thousand, which is not true. Uh, fifteen hundred, we've worked with fifteen hundred for married couple. Doesn't matter, it worked. Well, when I say married, I just want to correct myself. Married or civil marriage or like some unregistered partnership still works. So it's shared shared funds. But um, if someone wants to be safe, because we have changes from time to time, just put as much as you can. But let's say 3,000 would be like 100% safe to go with in the procedure. So yeah, to answer your question, Julie, 1,500 still with two people, still good. And the beauty of it, one account is enough. They don't have to have two accounts because we treat it as shared shared funds so yeah, that's the thing you need um, travel insurance which covers either world europe or just serbia doesn't matter you can get one here for 65 euro like that's that's nothing uh and it will cover one year period and it will cover just the basics but that's what you're buying you're buying something to get through the process if you want the real thing just sit with the guys from the insurance and tell them what you need so that's a different thing. I'm not going to address that one. So the minimum you can buy and use it successfully is 65 euros, something like that. Um, other thing is registering address. And I have to, I have to underline this. People from anywhere that arrived in Serbia, they had 24 hours to get their address registered at the police. It's How many hours? 24 hours. 24. Like one day. 24 hours. They will not look the exact hour but let's say until the end of next day's working hours you have to get it done uh, otherwise you're looking at a penalty which is not a lot 45 euro or less than 50 dollars but um, why would you go through that it's free it's only a few minutes time and landlord will actually he's obligated to do that and if you are in airbnb hotel or something like that which is registered uh, they can do it online. You don't even have to move a finger. Just tell them I need this and that's it. Now, um, that's the thing that people forget. And then they are here for 10 days, 15 days until they get stuff going. And then they come to us and say, we're ready. And by that time, you're already well after those 24 hours and you have to pay that penalty. We get people out of those, but I cannot guarantee. So that's the thing. Um, aside from that, you will need, you know, lease agreements for a long-term lease for the apartment. You will need um, some sort of short biography, um, photos taken and so on. But we, we, we deal with those when people are here. So aside from your passports, um, marriage certificate, birth certificate for the kids, just to show relation within the family. You don't need anything else. We create everything here. We draft it or we register it. So that's the only documents you actually need. But it's always good to, to actually consult legal assistance before you arrive to Serbia, just in case, because uh, every time it could be specific, it could mean that you need something more. So, yeah. Is, is there uh, a requirement to bring a visa D from your home country before you apply for a residency in Serbia um, or can everything be done from Serbia? No, um, only the residence permits and work permits, of course, can be done in Serbia and you have to do it while you're in Serbia. You can start the procedure and shortly exit and then return by the time it's done. That's fine. You can have multiple entries. Okay. But visas can only be, well, 
visa C, which is a tourist visa, and visa type D, which is a business visa or a long-term visa, you have to do those outside of Serbia through any embassy or consulate, um, preferably in your own country. But, that does not uh, have to be your own country. So if you were in Montenegro yeah. and there's a Serbian consulate, can yes. you start the process in Montenegro to do the visa D? Yes, which is also online. It has a different uh, platform, different website, but still online. A little bit more complicated procedure. The rules are rigorous. Uh, the checks are, you know, uh, international and domestic. And they check the Interpol, they check if you are on the wanted list or something like that. Um, but all in all, Visa D are for a limited set of countries, mostly Middle Eastern and East countries. So anything in the West, looking from point of Serbia, you probably don't, don't need a visa. Oh, so, like, okay, so, so yeah. Americans would not need to start a Visa D process no. in the US. They can just show up with their passports and with yeah. put money into a bank account. Um, exactly like that. Okay, so so, so that yeah. that was that that would not have to be a home ownership. So you can make a, a rental, and so this would go for pensioners as well as people like Julie and I. I am I'm assuming that we can come to Serbia, we can put money into a bank account, and then we can go ahead and apply for residency. We don't have exactly. to. We don't have to um, do anything special. We can just say we'd like to stay here, write a little biography of of um and exactly like that and we we help you with everything like we or other immigration lawyers we help you with everything you don't need to do anything uh you don't need to think about everything we we tell you what are the deadlines we estimate everything and we try to take as little of your time as possible so we do everything let's say you're buying a house we will check the property we will check the seller we would check the contract. If it was done by a realtor, we'll check it. If nobody's drafting it, we'll draft it within the price. We will not, um, how should I say, we will not charge things separately. So we have prices for real estates, for companies, for studies, and so on and so on. So within that, we cover everything, everything that needs to be done from the moment you land to the moment you have your permits in hand. That's, that's how we usually do it. Some people start the procedure uh, on their own and then they get stuck or something. We finish it. It's, it's also fine. So uh, when you said back to visas just for 10 seconds, uh, American, let's say American citizens, can have visas, visa D, but it's unnecessary. So I get a lot of that. Like they told us we have to get a visa D and they got one through I don't know which channels, Someone helped them, they did it alone, doesn't matter. And then they're shocked when they come here and I tell them, you did it for nothing. Because that's a work visa. And what visas, visa D is, let's say a company wants to send people here to work on a project for six months or less, they will not bother with residence permit. They will do the visa D in the US and send people here with these visas and they will come back. That's it, that's what visa is all about. If you don't need it, if you need it, that's a whole different thing. So let's say, as you said, for you to, you decide to buy a house, come to Serbia, retire. You come here, you find um, Airbnb, doesn't matter. And then you go house hunting and you find something you want to buy it. We check everything. We set up um, a notarizing the agreement. Here you have to go to a public notary. Everything has to be checked. And right after that, the notary actually files for transfer of ownership. You don't have to touch anything other than signing the deal and you know having legal assistance with you. That's that's all. Tax reports, everything is being done for you. So once you have this certified purchase agreement in hand, you can pretty much go to an immigration office, submit one of the originals or certified copy and other documents that are necessary, there you go. And you will 99% chance get three-year residence permit. So it's one year in some cases, but um, I cannot tell you exactly and guarantee who will get three years, who won, because it's a discretion that the police is allowed to you know, decide in, in each and every case. But if everything is 
ordinary, normal price of the house. People are showing enough funds. Um, if there are any questions, they provide documents, answers, three years guaranteed. But if you're buying something shady, something in an abandoned village, which is like 5,000 euro, you can get a house for 5,000 euros because nobody lives in that village. It's abandoned. Everyone moved to the city. And you can still technically apply with that and get your residence permit, but you will get a year. You will not get three years because they want to see if you're abusing your rights here or genuinely want to live there. So they will probably send someone to check it out. But if you buy an apartment or a normal house in a normal residential area, they will not even send anyone to check if you're there. Not even, they may call you on a phone to see if you're still here, but it will be your cellular phone, which pretty much you can pick up from Thailand, not in Noisa. So that's, that's how easy it is now. But when it comes to visas, you know, it's a whole different thing. It would require a new, <laughs> a new meeting. Don't get me on that. It's oh. it's like getting getting into the U.S. That's how hard it is. Okay. Let, let, let's let's ask. Let, let me ask you a question because this comes into play. Like we um, mm. we love Montenegro quite a bit, but the residency um, part of Montenegro that's kind of been something we've we've procrastinated on doing because we do own a home there is that you're required to be in the country for 10 months. Um, actually, it's 11 months. You can leave for an extra month if you have a reason. Um, under the Home Ownership Residency Program, there's a corporation, there's different types of programs in that country. But um, if you were to get residency in Serbia, do you have to spend a minimum amount of time in the country, whether it's six months or 10 months or what? Yeah, good question. Um... Yes, you do need to be here for the half of the granted period. So it doesn't say half the year, like six months, but half of the period that is granted. Now, that is a good question in terms of new rule book that is not yet adjusted to the new law. So you can have three years residence permit, but having the old rule book in, in, in installed, you can pretty much be here for a year and a half and rest. You can just be anywhere else which I don't think they will allow. They will implement something to keep you here more frequent and allow exits. <clears throat> My best guess is they're going to allow it six months each year, but for now, that's not, that's not what it says in the law. It says nothing and it's, it refers you to the rule book. So uh, for now, we don't have the exact information. We will have it, I trust, by the end of March, but that's why you need to check everything first. Now, um, I do have clients that hell, we, we just done that just before the New Year's. Um, the client left Serbia in February. She was here for less than six months for the entire year. And she haven't come back to Serbia since February. Now it's a year, but back in December, it was just under a year. So we applied and we just said, fingers crossed, and that's it. And she knew the risk. She may be denied her application. Shockers to all of us, she got another year. No issues. Okay. So sometimes she was here for three years back before that. So they probably figured she had to move because she is a director of a huge company here. And she probably had to rotate back to Poland and here so on. So they probably guessed she'll be back. She has interest in Serbia. She runs a company here still but someone else is her deputy, that, that's just the thing. So they, they can look through the rules if they see that it has some logic in it. But if you just abuse the rules and not here for the six months period that is still required, they may as well reset and just force you to, when apply for the next year residence permit or after those three years, apply again and treat it as year one. So. What you're losing, let's say, as a homeowner and do not respect the rule, uh, you want to apply for the permanent residence after those three years that are granted to you. They would deny that and tell you apply for the residence permit, temporary residence permit again and wait for another three years. That can very well happen. But if you show like a cause saying, I had to take a treatment, I had to take care of my business or something like that, 
they will just look through the rules and probably go your way because believe it or not, one of the rare immigration offices which will actually help the client and not strictly go by the rules and try to force everyone out. It's, that's that's a situation we had in the previous year and a half, especially now. I cannot guarantee in the future what will happen because at one point, government, government will have to rethink the strategy and say we have too many people now. I have to tell you, like we have 200,000 Russian people here, which is a huge community having in mind that there is only 7 million Serbians here, domestic and mm -hmm. citizens. And so 200,000 people is a lot. Most of that came after the wars, like the, a surge came yeah, of yeah, refugees all, all, basically are yeah. trying to escape the war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they, they, they Russians were occasionally coming to Serbia and let's say 99.5% are because of that and it's all temporary. You know, our services are, you know, in, in some belief that once everything is done, they will go back. So there won't be any, um, how should I say, further changes in the procedure for the worse. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there won't be any new waves. There won't be any um, new large groups of people coming in. Because whoever wanted to move, they moved by now both apartments, get their jobs, everything. And slowly they will probably return or go somewhere else. But um, if, as we can never know, there is another group of people trying to move to Serbia in large numbers, we can then think about maybe you know redoing the entire procedure, but that's highly unlikely. So what are your, your viewers are you know, hearing now in this video is probably to stay the new system, the simplified rules and everything. I don't think anytime soon they're going to change it for worse. So, uh, and I should mention probably one thing while we are at it now, the three years period is when you can apply for permanent residence and at the same time for the citizenship. In some cases, you have to renounce your previous citizenship. In most cases, you do not have to. And there are special cases where after one year, you can apply for citizenship. But please don't make me go through that because I'm afraid we'll put some uh, misinformation and then people are going to you know, address that and say, you said it in the video. Let's give it some time. I can maybe send you an email later on when you have it straight, you can post it somewhere on your website. So people can, people can know definitely what is the rule on this one year uh, time to get your citizenship, well, application for citizenship. So okay. that is an option. We, will, will, we are having a lot of emails, like every week there's at least five emails. How can I get this option? And the answer so far is please hold on. Let's, let's see the end of March because that's when the new government will be definitely installed. Right now there's just a technical government which has had elections. So nobody's touching anything while the government isn't isn't in place. So let's let's wait for March to hear more on that. But I think that's going to be the hot topic for everyone who wants to come here. So basically, after a year or working of of, of working or having real estate, you can apply for citizenship without renouncing your let's say American one, which nobody wants to do. So yes. yeah, that's, that's something for future talks. Yeah. So let, let me ask you a um, a question about uh, if somebody has residency, they bought a home, let's say Zlatibor, beautiful ski place up in the mountains, a lot of tourism, especially in the winter, but it has summer tourism too, a lot of basketball camps for the kids and mm -hmm. you know hiking and fresh air. So you have um, that community up there in Zlatibor. Let's say that Julie and I wanted to buy a home in Zlatibor, Serbia. We buy, uh, buy one and we say we're going to live there seven months out of the year. And that we'll probably maybe we'll leave for a good part of the winter, and we want to um, see if we can rent our place out on uh, Airbnb or Flatio or some sort of um, platform so that we can make an income off of that property. Would we be allowed to, under the residency uh, program, to rent our home out and make an income? And uh, if so, is is that tax? Because I'm assuming that that might be 
something people may want to do is live somewhere part of the time. And maybe they'll say, well, when I'm not there, I can rent my home out. Oh, strictly speaking and looking at the rule books that are in place now and the law, um, you were not supposed to rent it out. You're supposed to live there. It's your home. You're you know, a resident of Serbia and that is your registered address. However, there is no rule saying you cannot rent it out. And there is no rule saying you should be at all times in your home. So by, by um, having in mind the entirety of the law and the entirety of the practice, you can rent it out. How? Well, you can rent a room or the entire place. Nobody regulates that. Uh, the only thing you would have to pay is tax. You have to pay it. <clears throat> and it's uh, 20% of, well, up to 20% of the rent. So every month, pay the rent. That's it. For the time that you're renting it out. So you're not registering any permanent business activity or anything else. You can just pay the tax for each rent you get. Uh, you could probably, for that short amount of time, just the winter, pay everything once the renting is done. But, um, you know, it's always best to be, be, be clear with the tax office. Just pay it when it's due and that's it. So you're not losing your residence permit, definitely. But um, if you're renting long term, that may be an issue. So just for winter while you're away. I don't think anyone's going to make a problem out of it. I don't see how they would actually make any issue out of it officially. Uh, so, yeah, in practice, it would not be a problem. You have to pay the tax. Um, it yet it yet uh, needs to be detailed regulated, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon because there aren't a lot of cases like this. It would be here and there, and that's it. They're not going to bother with few hundreds of people renting out their places that are used to get your residence permit. That's it. So I would say, and as a lawyer to any client that comes here, I would say, go for it. It's not a problem. And even if it is a problem, uh, it cannot affect your residence permit. They can only tell you, uh, don't do it again. That's it. So that's the worst that can happen, but it's still unofficial. You will not get a letter. You will not get any final notice, anything. They will just tell you for the next season or something, get a new apartment and rent that one. Okay. They cannot do anything the tax, against you because uh, that's forbidden. forbidden. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, what is the tax percent uh, on, on that rental? Do you know? Say 20. Did you say Yeah, 20? Yeah, it's, it's, they, they made a mess on how to calculate it, but I'm telling you something between 15 and 20%. Don't get me into specifics. I'm not an accountant, but it's between 15 and 20%. So if you're calculating what pays out, pays off, you know, just go with 20% and then uh, just deal with the rent amount and that's it. But um, you can get an accountant having draw up the tax report once and just repeat it every month. You don't need an accountant after that, just once. Or have someone that is renting just, you know, I can explain it to you, but then again, someone with the license should, you know, guarantee for it. That's how you are safe. And it will cost you like 30 euros to get this done once. So you're good to go. I would always pick a professional accountant to do that. First of all, he guarantees for the, uh, well, having it correctly filled. And second of all, you don't have to think about it, just repeat it after that because same amount of rent, just a different month. That's it. So, and yeah. I'm sure that uh, people will be interested in knowing what uh, is the cost to get a residence uh, permit at this point for a, a single and a husband and wife for yeah. civil partnership, et cetera. Okay. Uh, so I'll explain for one person and uh, in terms of fees, the government fees, it's just adding persons. There is no like... Uh, different fees for group, family, or something. It's just per person. That's it. Um, the fee for the actual residence permit uh, until today and probably will continue to be so is roughly 190 euros for the one or three year period. Doesn't matter. Um, it's the cost of the process, not the amount of time you're applying for. So that's 190 euros roughly. It's 
21,113 dinar if you pay it by card. If you go to pay it, as I said in the beginning of this uh, meeting, you know, if you go on foot to handle everything in documents, it's going to be some 500 dinar less, $5 less, but just pay it by card. It's simple. It's it's just simple for everyone. Uh, so that's one thing. Second thing is <clears throat> work permit. Who needs a work permit, which is some 155 euros. So just under 17,000 dinars, 155 euros, something you should remember. That's that. That's that. Uh, there are small expenses, <clears throat> sorry, like getting your photos taken, translating something, but that's all under 50 euro. It's not. Hey, Nemanja, I'm going to tell you that it's been <clears throat> great to catch back up with you. Um, you know, you've, you've given us a lot of great information and I'm going to say that uh, life um, or the ability to have a life in Serbia seems so much easier <clears throat> than we could have imagined. It's 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 a lot easier than last time when we spoke. I think it's much more clear. <coughs> so we definitely appreciate you spending time explaining the residency rules to us. Um, as a reminder, everybody, Julie and I, we're traveling the world with our two dogs. <coughs> what it's like to live in other countries, other places. We're trying to share our experiences and expenses with you. And you know, we go do real estate stuff. We talk to residency experts and we hope that you're gonna subscribe, give this video a like. <coughs> And until next time, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.